in bed Can get her out of my head The sun is shining but it's just a blur It's another day of missing her She left me because of my addiction to spinning curve I spent all my money, left none for her I guess she had needs, but I clearly prefer To buy more watches, I'm caught in her clutches And honestly, I love how they make me feel The first one I got, I liked quite a lot Then the second one came, and it was more of the same Couldn't take my eyes off the dial The gorgeous colors make me smile And man, those finishes are fine and the more I see, the harder they are to decline I want to buy them all Head over heels I fall Each and every time I see new spinnakers So many colors per style Oh no, 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 no That choice takes me a while You want a new spinnaker on your wrist It's calling your name, hard to resist Go ahead and treat yourself, you deserve it Smile to yourself while you click to reserve it When that package arrives, the best way to survive Is to hide it from your wife You know that's right But honey, it's my last one Now that I've got it, I'm done But she knows you've been buying them constantly since 2021 Automatic course, they got you covered, of course Classic watch with simple date or Adding a GMT to complicate Hey guys, welcome back to the Spotlight Watch Review. My name is Jim, and I'm here to discuss with you another amazing watch from Spinnaker Watches. Now, Spinnaker often names their models after legends and pioneers, and in this case, the Dumas is named after the famed diving pioneer Frédéric Dumas, who was a partner of Jacques Cousteau and part of the many adventures of the Calypso. He's been featured in photos and filmed by Jacques Cousteau probably more than any other single diver in history. And you can see footage of Dumas in the Cousteau film, The Silent World of Jacques Cousteau. Dumas also helped Cousteau develop the aqua lung for underwater breathing ability, and that too was showcased in that particular film. So, Spinnaker have decided to make this much more than just a simple diver. We're going to get into that in a minute. I want to quickly show you what's in the packaging. I have already unboxed this. I have already sized it. I've been wearing it. I am that excited about this watch. So let's go ahead and get it out. So there is your outer sleeve, the inner box, very similar to the one you saw me unbox with the Fleas GMT. Inside of the lid is going to be your warranty card and your instruction manual. You can also scan this code. There's also going to be a code on a decal over the exhibition case back that you can scan as well. And there it is. This is what they're calling the reversed gray. What you've got is a black fume dial in actuality. So it starts off gray in the center and uh, gradiates outward to a darker black toward the chapter ring. And then the accent colors are kind of like a, a sand brown, a sandy tan which I absolutely love. One of the things that Spinnaker does so incredibly well is their colorways and the way they detail their colorways. Again, I'll discuss that more in just a few minutes. So you'll receive the watch. It'll be set on the bracelet. You'll have a strap changing tool and then you'll have your additional strap. Let's go ahead and get this out. Undo the clasp. And we'll put that off to the side over here where I can actually reach it. Now, look how gorgeous this watch is. Now, if you look at the overall design, it's meant to mimic popular dive watch designs from the late 60s going into the 70s that had a lugless design. They were very short lug to lug, but still tended to be on the larger side for watches of that time period. 
very, very handsome looking design overall. And through the back, you can see the SII NH34 automatic movement inside. Some of the main features of this, you're going to have an omnidirectional rotating bezel that's going to be for your traveler's function. So you do have a true functioning GMT in here. There is your independent GMT hand. And you can set off an additional time zone if you prefer to do so very, very quickly and easily. Now, you do have a screw down crown. I have it unscrewed and popped so I can hack the movement. So we have a relative balance to the dial here. So you're getting a 300 meter water resistant diver that goes above and beyond what you would typically expect in a classic standard dive watch. But they didn't stop there because this watch is all about features and what I consider to be an incredible design. You've got a sapphire crystal with clear anti-reflective coating. You've got, as I mentioned before, inside the NH34 automatic 24 joule GMT movement that's running at 21.6. Complications are going to be your basic time set, calendar, as well as the second autonomous time zone. And you have a ton of of new light luminescence throughout this dial. And you're really, I think, going to be impressed when you see that. I'm going to give it a shot here with the UV light in a second. We'll kill the lights and take a good look at that. And you're even going to be getting a luminescent cabochon set into the crown, which is something we haven't seen very many brands do. So let me go ahead and lay this out. We're going to go ahead and talk about specs. I'm going to get the glare of my boom light out of the way. And then we're going to set it up on the strap so you can kind of get an idea of how it looks on both. So your overall specs are as follows. Your case is made of 316L stainless steel. Size in diameter is going to be 43 millimeters. Your case thickness is 15 millimeters. Lug to lug is only 48. So even if you typically don't go as large as 43 millimeters on your case size because you have a somewhat petite wrist, you're not really going to have to worry about how it's going to wear because that very short lug to lug distance is going to allow it to sit on top of your wrist and not overhang. Your dial color is a black fumé. And your luminescence is done with Swiss New Light. Crystal is going to be sapphire. Your crown type is a screw down. And your bracelet slash strap is going to be 22 millimeters wide at the lugs. And you have the quick change pins both in the strap and in the bracelet, making it super easy to swap around as often as you want to do it. And the strap, by the way, is done in natural rubber. It's not in silicone, so it's not going to uh, attract dust and pet hair and all that kind of stuff to stick to it. 300 meters water resistant. It weighs 200 grams on the bracelet, and you get a two-year warranty. Once again, the retail price on this is $550, but what I would suggest you do is bookmark the Spinnaker Watches website because they often do 20 and 25% sales. I would also tell you, sign up for their newsletter because they often do pre-release deals when they go to first launch an item and you get a big savings. And they often do very limited special collaboration series watches that if you're not signed up on their newsletter, you won't know is coming. And by the time you find out about that new item, it's already sold out. I unfortunately went through that with a very, very popular model that sold out within minutes of it debuting. And I had no idea. And I'm still struggling to get my hands on one. I will do it. It will happen there will be one on my wrist. Now let's go ahead and swap this out so you can see just how easy it is. It's the exact same procedure as the Fleas GMT. If you have a Fleas, you already know how to do this. Super simple. You're going to have the tabs right back here, which is going to be your quick release on the spring bars. You just squeeze them together, take them right off. 
which side is which, okay. And then what I've learned on this one is you want to line this up at an angle and get it in. Otherwise, the, uh, the strap being a little bit wide, what happens is, let me just zoom in to show you, it's brought in very narrow to go in the hidden lug, and then it gets wide right here so that it doesn't look like a super skinny, oddly fitting strap as it comes out of the case. So if you don't line it up just right, the wider section of the strap likes to wedge itself. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and try that on. And there it is. Move my boom light again. Look how handsome that is. If my camera will focus, there we go. Now it's funny because I was considering before it arrived putting one of my many NATO or Zulu straps on this. And I'll be honest with you, while I don't typically like the accordion style dive strap, it fits on this look really, really well because of that kind of vintage diver look. And it feels so comfortable that I'm perfectly happy with it like this, not even worried about swapping it out. I do love the fact that they have the keepers in the sand color that goes with the colors in the minute hand as well as in the bezel. They really tie together their themes very, very well. They did the same thing on the Fleas GMT, where that strap is exact complementing colors to the two colors that are in the bezel. It's so well done. And then their bracelets are so well done. I, I literally can't find anything to complain about with this brand. I am a flat out Spinnaker fan now. It's very evident that I love my Fleas GMT and I'm starting to feel the same way almost immediately about the Dumas. It's a proper man size at 43 millimeters without being overly large or overbearing in any way. Sure, they could have done 45 or 46 millimeters, but it would have been too large at that point. I think they found that perfect size for this watch. They give you incredible colorways, and I do want to show you all the different colorways this is available in in a minute. And I think the way they detail them, like doing stuff like this, is most brands would have just left those as black keepers. It would have been cheaper, it would have been faster, and they wouldn't have had just uh, whatever number they made in this colorway limited to how many of these pieces they were going to make. They could have just done maybe orange to go with the orange central sweep hand and the hour hand. They could have done a number of different things, but they tied it together perfectly. And I find that all of these things, including their finishing, is shocking for their price points. Now, do you think Spinnaker is still a proper micro brand or are they not since they're owned by a larger conglomerate? I feel that they are because they operate the same way as most micro brands do, so I still see them that way. They market directly to the public and everything is done kind of on a limited basis. They're offering uh, extreme value for the materials and the designs that they're offering. I, I think that they really fit that micro brand structure, even though now they're owned by a much larger corporation, and that's fine. As long as they stick to those ideals, I think I'm still going to remain a fan of what they do. Now let's go ahead and put it back on the bracelet. We simply yank on that tab and pull those off. Okay, so that's the six o'clock position there. I want to make sure I get my bracelet on correctly because there's nothing worse than having your bracelet oriented backwards. So my fingers are probably in the way obscuring the lens where you can't see what I'm doing. All you're doing is you're going to line up this lug, I'm sorry, this end link into the hidden lug 
and you're just going to compress the spring bar by getting these little nubs under your fingernails, index and thumbnail, boom. And you're just going to squeeze them together, drop it in, and let go. That's it. It's all you got to do. Super simple. It's only a little more challenging on the second side because you're dealing with a closed bracelet. So I've got that lined up. And you just want to listen for the clickies. And you want to give it a good couple of tugs before you put it on your wrist and trust that it's going to stay secure. And there we go. Now they have gone through a few different types of bracelets over the years on the Dumas line. And I think they landed on a really good one. The original Dumas, as far back as I can see anyway, they did the steel mesh bracelet, which would have been time appropriate for the design style they were going for because in the 60s, 70s, the, the, the steel mesh bracelets were very, very popular. However, what you're not seeing is this. There is a wonderful polish that they've done on this bracelet that makes it just pop. And in the sunlight is where it really does it. I want to zoom in here and I want to show you what I mean. So the entire bracelet is a nice, fine brushed finish, but you'll notice that there are flats at the ends of each of the side pieces. And those are mirror polished. So when the bracelet is wrapped around your wrist, you just get glints of light bouncing off all of these polished surfaces. Just like that. And everything else being brushed really makes it look like a jewelry piece. And they did the same thing here with the case. So the entire case, top side, lugs, sides, everything is brushed. But then they did a chamfer, a bevel going around the outer edges and they mirror polished that. And by not having any other polished areas on this watch, it looks fantastic. It's a beautiful accent that isn't over the top. It's not gaudy in any way. And that's another thing that I really like about Spinnaker and why I'm becoming such a huge fan of their, of their brand is because they have a stylistic way of approaching things where everything looks very understated. And then there will be a pop of class and elegance that you just weren't expecting. And it's so low key that it generally doesn't show up in photographs. It's when you receive the watch and you go, wow, this is so much nicer than I was even anticipating. Because at some point you kind of sell yourself, don't you? When you're, when you're watch shopping and you find that watch that you really have to have, you sell yourself on it and you keep looking at the pictures over and over and over again. You force yourself to buy it, and then the whole time while you're waiting for it to arrive, you're staring at those pictures, and then you're searching YouTube for reviews, because you just want to see it. You don't really care what somebody's saying about it, but you want to see it. You want to see it on the wrist. You want to see it moving around. You want to see the movement functioning, and I did the exact same with this watch. And I did the same thing with my, my Fleas GMT as well. And when it arrived, it exceeded all of my expectations. Just by that little bit of additional finishing that they chose to do on the bracelet links. Another thing that I loved, let's go ahead and flip this over to UV. The loom is ridiculous. Let's go ahead and kill the lights here for a second. <laughs> yeah. And there is the glow-in-the-dark cabochon. What a classy choice. Very, very cool. So you see that 
half of the day is set up in Loom, half of the day just has Loom for the numerals. So you have your AM and PM indicated very clearly. AM is going to be when everything is lit, as if the sun were lighting it, and PM is going to be the dark. It's just perfectly done. Now here's the funny thing. I feel just as impressed about the loom on my Fleas. The Fleas, I can read the time through most of the night. Wore this to bed last night, and I set an alarm on my phone to wake me up at 5.15 in the morning, where it's still dark outside, but it's pretty much the maximum amount of time that this I would have to rely on to read. I looked at it, and it was perfectly legible. Perfectly. They have upgraded the new light in this over even this newest version of the Fleas GMT. Now, I don't know that the compound itself has changed, but I think that the application, how many passes they made, how many layers of that loom is on there, I think that is probably what's different. If you're wondering about the movement, listen, the, the reliability of the Seiko movements is legendary. They undersell themselves. They'll tell you some ridiculous, crazy variance for what they tell you to expect for your time of day variance, right? It's going to be off by 30 to 45 seconds plus or minus per day or something ridiculous like that. I have never, ever seen a Miyota movement, I'm sorry, a, <laughs> a Seiko movement run that inaccurate ever. This, which I've been wearing religiously, Barely loses a couple seconds a day. But we're talking two, three, four seconds is the variance that I've seen. And I would expect similar out of this. Seiko makes a fantastic movement. They're not the prettiest movements. They're not the fanciest movements. But they are absolute workhorses that work fantastically well. So there is my thoughts, or there are my thoughts on the Dumas GMT. I think it's utterly fantastic. If this is the style of diver that you like, I promise you, it's going to impress you beyond what you're expecting if you order one of these. And it doesn't matter where you order it. Sure, you can buy it directly from Spinnaker's website. And they also have a few retailers that have them. I've seen advertisements with on Facebook through watches.com and a few other places. Wherever you get it, whatever price point you pay, I can assure you that you will be absolutely blown away. I am a massive fan of the brand now. I'm still looking at more and more and more. And I do like some of their other brands as well that the Dartmouth Group owns. You, you guys have seen me review the Nubeo, the Nubeo uh, Skylab. What a fun, fantastical watch that is. RGMT, and they're starting to come up with some really cool designs. But Spinnaker in particular is kind of going to be my new... Omega. Omega was always the brand I told people if I could only buy within one brand because they represent so many styles, dress up, dress down, diver, casual, elegant, uh, crazy complications, basic complications. They kind of did everything and had every kind of colorway that I wanted and every style and feel and you know mesh steel bracelets and link steel bracelets and waterfall bracelets and rubber straps. They kind of did it all, right? And Spinnaker, I think, is kind of fulfilling that niche for me now. But I don't have to spend three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 anymore. And I'm really, really happy about that. These are fantastic. Give them a try. The quality, the finishing, the materials, everything has been super impressive. I can't think of a negative thing to say which is weird for me 
because I could always find one little nitpicky thing here or there about pretty much any watch. And yet, I couldn't be happier with these. So good on you, Spinnaker. Great job. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you guys for checking it out, and I'll see you on the next video.